Hey, what's up, YouTube? Jade up here to talk about a couple of topics that we talked about on the PWTR show today. If you are subscribed, go ahead and click that yellow button over there. Thanks. Now, if you want to listen to the PWTR show, if you missed it while we were on live, you can click the link in the description box and listen to the whole show on archive. On archive. But getting into the topics that we talked about. First, The Rock will be appearing on the SmackDown 10th anniversary show next week. It was broken. It was like breaking news to me on the show. Um... I guess it'll be great to see The Rock back on WWE television, but he won't be appearing in person. He'll be appearing on video. Uh, like I said, it would be great for him to appear on the 10th anniversary of a show that was born out of one of his catchphrases, you know, SmackDown. You know, he says he lays SmackDown on your candy asses. You know, that was one of The Rock's catchphrases, and the show was born out of that catchphrase, and he's not even going to be on the show live. But what can you ex expect from a sellout who just sold all of us to dry and kicked us to the curb to go to Hollywood and you know for the record I still think the rock is a sellout and two minutes on a fucking video is not gonna change my opinion of him so um yeah you're still a sellout and uh for all of the people who were hoping that he was gonna return in some big fashion I guess beggars can't be choosers you have to settle for what you get so hey this is what we get and speaking of the SmackDown 10th anniversary show the main event for the show will be Undertaker John Cena and DX teaming up to face CM Punk Randy Orton and Legacy uh, Legacy I don't think they have any connection to SmackDown whatsoever except for they had a couple of a couple of appearances maybe just one one that like sticks in my head no I think they had a couple I don't know uh, I'm sure some of you statisticians will tell me down in the comment section below, but I do know that they showed up to, like, jump Triple H uh, before WrestleMania. So, yeah, I do remember that moment. But, um, yeah, I love, I always love it when um, Undertaker and Triple H get in the same ring together. You know, they're two of my favorites, you know, whether they're teaming up against each other like they're doing in this case or they're facing off one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, that's something to look forward to. Uh, make sure you watch SmackDown 10th Anniversary Show next week, Friday. 8 p.m. Another thing that I have to say about SmackDown, this last night's episode of SmackDown, a pretty good show. It was a great improvement over last week's show. One thing that sticks out to me on this episode, Vince McMahon takes out time in his day to appear on SmackDown and put over a young guy. That young guy was Drew McIntyre. Vince gets in the ring, you know, he's taking a couple of jabs at the Oklahoma crowd, but what he does, like his purpose of being there was to put over Drew McIntyre, says this guy has the talent, he has all of this, he has all of that, and he's going to be a future world champion. Drew McIntyre gets in the ring and, you know, he's like telling us why he's going to be all of these things that Vince McMahon said. You know what? I'm hoping that Drew McIntyre does end up being something special because the owner the chairman, the, the the CEO of the company takes out his time to put you over. That's putting a lot of weight on your shoulders, but hopefully he does live up to that. We know he has the appearance. We've, we, we He looks like a champion. He has the aggression that a champion needs, but we've yet to see him in a ring since his re-debut on WWE television. You know, we know he can attack somebody. We know he can whoop somebody's ass from behind, but when that bell rings... Is that mouth going to be backed up by some actual ability? So we'll be, um, I'll be look, definitely looking forward to that. But, um, I'm glad that Vince McMahon is finally taking the initiative to put over young talent. Like, he, how dare he sit back, and this is like rent mode, just a little one. How dare he sit back and say, you know, it's been reported that in, like, creative team meetings, he's saying, why can't we create new stars? Why can't we do this? And why can't we do this? Half fucking low. You are the owner of the company, it's all in your hands. You have the responsibility of everything that goes on in that ring. If you want to put over young talent, get up off your ass and do like you just did. So like I said, criticize when necessary, but give props where credit is due. Credit is due to Vince McMahon for putting over um, Drew McIntyre, but he needs to do this more often. Moving on. What else did I have to talk about? Oh, another topic that we discussed on the show, Bret Hart, is, um, it's been reported. I have to, you know emphasize on the reported that Bret Hart is open to a WWE return. We all know Bret Hart hasn't been seen on w, uh, live on a WWE show since uh, Survivor Series in 1997, the Montreal Screwjob. That was the last time we've ever seen him live on a WWE show. We saw him in a taped segment for Vince McMahon's tribute show, like, what was it, um, 
2007, I believe. We saw him there, but we haven't seen him live since 1997. Uh, what do you guys think uh, Bret Hart would be able to do in WWE? I know the obvious storylines that you know he could have while he's in WWE, something with Shawn Michaels or and or something with the Hart Dynasty. I think that would be great if he comes back as manager to a Hart, to the Hart Dynasty because you can't have Bret Hart come back in your company where you have his family right there and not capitalize on something like that. Like, it's immense possibilities to Bret Hart being uh, back in WWE. So hopefully he does come back and hopefully these reports are true, you know, um, and I would love to see Bret Hart back in WWE. Now I want to move on to, like, the main topic of this video. This... I'm not even gonna lie, it kind of pisses me off. I'm not gonna say pisses off. No, I, yes I am, yes I am. I'm gonna say kind of pisses me off. WWE fans and their craving for blood. This is a typical WWE fan. Blood, 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 dirty blood. That's basically how it is. The WWE fans or like wrestling fans in general, and this is something that the TNA fans hold against WWE, you know, because they want blood, they crave blood, they need blood and matches, you know. It's 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 just like a crazy obsession to me. Like I'm not the type of person that holds blood as at such a high significance in matches. So two questions I want to ask you guys. One even knowing that WWE has a PG rating, knowing that blood is like basically banned in WWE, are you still expecting there to be blood at the, the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view? And the second question is, if there is no blood, like I said, knowing that there is a PG rating, will you still be disappointed and will you hold like the match scores, you know, would you hold that against them simply because there is no blood? The reason that I said I was pissed off at this is because we have some people, like take No Way Out, for example. You have the SmackDown Elimination Chamber and you have the Raw Elimination Chamber. I will put both of those matches in the top five of the um, best matches all of this year. I will put both of those matches in the top five. But we have some people, a lot of people actually, act, you know, saying that those matches sucked simply because they had no blood. Like, they would say, oh, the match was, um, you know, oh, the match sucked, it had no blood, and how, how in the hell is that even logical at all? So it's like saying, you can have the same exact match, you can have the same exact match on one hand, same exact match on the other hand, and this match is all the more better, and this match sucks. This match didn't have any blood, so it sucks, but the same exact match can have blood, and it's all, it's all of a sudden great. That's just something that I do not get. I'm going to ask you guys, because, you know, the PWTR co-hosts on the show, they explained to me, they kind of schooled me, you know, gave their opinions on why blood is held at high, such a high significance. Like, I have so, I, the people that I come in contact with, you know, most of the time, they're saying, oh, we want blood, oh, we need blood, we got to have this, and if the match doesn't have blood, it automatically sucks. But nobody ever explains why blood is so significant. Why? So that's what I want you guys to do also. If you're one of those ones who say, WWE, they have to have blood in certain matches like this, I want you to explain why. Please, school me. Take me out to dry. Take me out. Just, just totally school me. Because I really want to know why. That's my only question. Well, not my only question, but um, yeah, that's, that's a huge question. So, uh, yeah, down in the comment section below, discuss every single thing I talked about in the video. Hopefully you guys rate the video, you know, comment, all of that's good stuff. Give me your opinions, your views, your, all of it, all of it, all of it. And make sure you listen to the PWTR show, link in the description box. Peace out.